Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are going to be coming back to a topic I covered last year, Pokemon Home and its compatibility with modern games. There's a lot to discuss here, I have a lot of thoughts, we're just going to jump right into the discussion of why it's not here yet. Now this is something that we deal with every single generation. This goes back to when we had software to store our Pokemon. One of the first online cloud services that we had was Pokemon Bank on the 3DS. Before that, you had to use side games and spin-offs to store Pokemon outside of your main game. You had on the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, you could bring your Pokemon into your GameCube with Pokemon Box via Ruby and Sapphire. That was one way to store them. It was a game dedicated to storage. In Pokemon Battle Revolution, you could upload the data of your Pokemon onto the box services in Battle Revolution, as well as My Pokemon Ranch, which you could also upload the data of your Pokemon from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, store them on the Wii, and then move them as you please. You also got an exclusive Pokemon. But in Generation 6, Yes, Generation 6, it's been a long time. Pokemon X and Y, we got Pokemon Bank on the 3DS. And it took a handful of months after Pokemon X and Y came out, I believe it was December or January, for Pokemon Bank to become fully integrated with the brand new games. This is the way that it went every single generation. Whenever we have a new game come out, it feels as if we're waiting months to actually have compatibility to either bring our old Pokemon up to the newest games or transfer Pokemon between games in a generation. We were waiting for this with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus to have connection with Pokemon Home on the Switch and also have connection to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Home came out following Sword and Shield. It was the new solution to how you were going to store your Pokemon. Pokemon Bank had a monthly fee, and then once we moved over to the Nintendo Switch, that monthly fee increased with Pokemon Home. They promised new services, they moved some old free things to Pokemon Home. There was a lot going on with Pokemon Home, but this has been the pattern every single year. And if you are a longtime viewer of the channel, you might remember that around this time last year, last April, I made a video basically just ripping into the Pokemon company because it was April. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl had come out the November before. Legends Arceus had come out a couple months back in January to that point, and there was no Pokemon home support. Now, there are members of the community who point to, well, Game Freak develops this, and we want to give them their time developing these sorts of things. We decry when, when games seem to get rushed and products aren't finished on launch. We do this with the regular games. Why not give the same credence to an update like with Home? We go after Game Freak whenever they seem to give us half-baked games, brand new generations like Sword and Shield, which got heavily criticized. Give them their time. There have been prominent members of the community that have parroted this idea. This is an app that we pay for on a monthly three months and a yearly basis you can pick a plan essentially this is an extra service that they took already existing free things like global trade and other things like wonder trade moved it behind a paywall and said we're going to increase the charge from what we were charging for bank even though they're similar services these features are locked behind a paywall that takes months to have an update pushed after the launch of brand new games. This is not a package with the $60 game that we already pay for. This is on top of that. This is on top of DLC, which we now pay for practically with every new generation. Sword and Shield had DLC. Scarlet and Violet are getting DLC this year. This is the norm for Pokemon now. It replaces the third version, the Platinum of the Emerald. These are those, but as DLC. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. But if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. It does not take the core development team at Game Freak 
to finish development on a new game. Let's use Scarlet and Violet since that's where we're at. Finish. Ship it. Get it ready for production. Mass production. Send it out. Release it. Begin work on DLC. Then, okay, let's address home. This is something that can be outsourced. This is something that can have your team expanded to support. There is no excuse for waiting months to release something that we pay for on a yearly basis that they parroted and talked about for uh, continuously. This is a service that will evolve and grow as new Pokemon games comes out. It's marketed as a service that will survive even the Switch and will move to the next console. It's on mobile devices. It's on your Switch. It's on, it's going to be on the future console. This service needs to be much more robust and it hasn't. And every year, we have people who come on here and say, as I did last year, why isn't Pokemon Home support here yet? It's something we pay for. It's an integral part of the modern Pokemon experience. If you have teams of previous games that you enjoy moving up to the next generation, it is, it is paramount to have this working. I want to play with older Pokemon, older members of my team, older legendaries on the newest game. In years past, members of the community and Game Freak have talked about, well, one of the reasons we do this is so when you get the brand new game, you have to play through with brand new Pokemon, explore the brand new generation. We don't necessarily want you to go back to your old teams and just blow through the game. Or when it comes to competitive play in regionals, they have had rules in the past of, well, we want you to use the newest Pokemon. We're going to bar the older Pokemon. We want to use the new set of Pokemon, the ones that we're introducing in these games. We're going to limit the amount of Pokemon that can be used. All of these excuses have been parroted. Here's the problem with all of them. And I understand this video is six minutes long and it's, it's very ranty and it's not very much on topic. And I apologize, but it's the same. It's the same ethos that I made my video last year with this. All of these problems do not have to be solved in this way. By barring us from utilizing the full potential of a service we pay for, you can code in other means to make all of these things a reality. You want to block certain Pokemon from competitive play, that can be coded in independently. You want to make it so you can't just upload your Pokemon via home right when you get to the first Pokemon Center and blow through the new game. That's fine. Code in Pokemon Home compatibility to the fifth gym or to beating the champion or something like that. Although I will say as a side note, in theory, I understand you can do that. I don't support that personally. I think everything should be unlocked from the start. But there are other ways to do this waiting until May of the following year of a brand new generation to unlock full home support doesn't make any sense. And the excuses are so, so small and so just un... It's anti-consumer, unethical was the word, but anti-consumer works better. It's just ugly. It was ugly last year, it was ugly this year. And I understand that I'm going to get comments on this video. I got comments and tweets like it last year. It'll come. Why are you complaining? Why, uh, what was the purpose of this video? It's uh, home support will come. Who cares when it shows up? You're making a big deal out of something small. It's a pointless problem to have. It is an anti-consumer decision that Game Freak makes with this service. This is a decision. There are not robust roadblocks in the way of home having this long of a wait to add compatibility. And when home compatibility comes out, it'll have a small software update. Scarlet and Violet will have the update. Pokemon Home will have the update. And then the next day it'll flip on and these videos won't matter anymore and this topic won't matter anymore until we get to the next generation or the next set of remakes and we're waiting six months again. Pokemon Bank with X and Y, I honestly think was the closest we had to release of the game and then release of Bank. There were some issues. If I'm remembering my history correctly, Pokemon Bank was promised in December of 2013 when X and Y came out October 10th, I believe, of 2013. They had some development issues. They had some issues with handling the servers, and I believe it got pushed back to January. That was the closest we've had. 2013. X and Y turned, thir uh, turned 10 years old this year, and this is still the best they've done. There should be no delay from new game release 
to Pokemon Home support being added in the year 2023. This should be a robust, user-friendly, pro-consumer system that we are paying for on top of the game, on top of DLC, on top of Nintendo Switch Online. It should not take this long. Hopefully, there are some leaks to suggest that home support will be added in May. Uh, everyone expects it to be added before the DLC drops later this year, of course. This problem is going to go away relatively soon. But I have I have punted on making this video for three months now because I've been like, well, home support will come, but it hasn't. And we're waiting here at the end of April for a paid subscription service that we all have, that we are required to have to keep our Pokemon up to the modern, a uh, modern day especially when in modern Pokemon games, you can't keep all of your Pokemon in the newest game because not every Pokemon is programmed into the newest game. My PSA to the community is to continue to call for Game Freak to fix this in the future. Don't make me make this video in a couple years because I will. When we get generation, when we get the next generation and, and Pokemon home support isn't immediate, I'll make this video again because it's worth talking about. Do you guys want Pokemon Home support? Do you pay for Pokemon Home? Is this something that you even care about? Please let me know down in the comments section below. If you think I'm just ranting for the sake of ranting, you can let me know too. I appreciate all the comments. Hopefully by the time this video goes out, it's here and I've been proven wrong, but I don't think I will. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Turn that notification bell on so you never miss my future content. I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.